A very good afternoon to you all. And today we begin with the second part of our Python series. And today we talk about the data types in Python. There are several data types in Python. These include numeric, uh, basically as the name indicates, these are numbers. And they themselves can be of three types as we'll discuss during the course of the lecture. Then you have strings. Anything encoded within double quotes would basically be a string and it is basically a sequence of characters or numbers or both included. Then we have the third data type that is called Boolean and Boolean typically is either true or false. So these three basically represent individual data points. So if you have multiple data points, they could be arranged in several different ways and depending on the way they are arranged and the way they're represented, you have data structures called as list pupil, dictionary, and set, right? And today in this class, we're basically talking about numeric and string uh, data types. So the numeric data type itself can be of three types. It could be an integer, so A equals to 15, no decimal and no numbers beyond the decimal. So this is basically your integer. Then it could be a float where you have the same number 15, but now it is represented as 15.0. So because it has a decimal place, and a digit beyond the decimal, this is basically a float. And then you have the third type that is uh, the complex uh, numeric data type, A equals to 1J. And then finally, you have the string data type. In the string data type, basically anything that is enclosed within double quotes and assigned to a variable name becomes a string. So for example, A equals to Vipin. So Vipin is a string here, right? So let's uh, have a look at this in more details and uh, let's also see how you can identify what is the class of your variable that contains a specific data point. We can use the type function to check which class a variable or a value belongs to, and I'll demonstrate that as we move into the practical demonstration. We move back to Google Colab and start our program. So I'm in my Google Colab now, and I'm looking at my program that is named as datatypes.py. So I've used a text box to write the main message, welcome to Dr. Wilkins Biotech and Bioinformatics Classroom. And then to add sub information, I use a second text box. So here, of course, I tell you that today we'll have a look at numeric and string data types in Python. Uh, the numeric data type is, can itself be of three types. It could be an integer, a float, or a complex. I will have examples of this as well. And anything that is within double quotes becomes a string. And this could be a single alphabet, a combination of alphabets, a combination of alphabets and numbers, alphabets and special characters, or just numbers. So anything that is within a double quote becomes a string in Python. Right? So now let's have an example. So first you have uh, this one here where I say the variable name is DNA and this is equated to a string because it is in double quotes now. So here you are DNA is equal to ATTGCC, right? And those of you who know what a DNA is, you know that DNA is made up of four nucleotides, A, T, G, and C. So this is basically a sequence of a, of a DNA, right? So let me execute this. And because I'm not asking to print, it will simply execute and not show you any message. So when you run this, the value of DNA now becomes ATT GCC, and which is a string data type. So then we move on and we move to the second step now. I say num1 equals to one, two, three. And uh, so I'm basically declaring a variable and assigning value to it using the equal to sign. So I say num1 equals to one, two, three, which means now, when I execute this, num1 will have a value of 123. Then I say num2 equals to 21.19. So we execute the next line. This is basically to say num3 equals to minus 15. So a value of minus 15 is being assigned to num3. And then num4, we say num4 equals to 2 plus 4j. So this is going to be, if you look at the type of data that is going to be in num4, it will be complex. So now we come down to checking the data type of the variable that we've used earlier in the first four statements, which include DNA, num1, num2, num3, and num4. So the key function that you can use in Python to determine the data type of a variable is the function called type, right? So we'll use the type function to determine what is the data type for each of these variables here that we already declared. So we say print and in round brackets and double quotes, we say the data type of DNA is, we close the uh, quotes, comma, and then we say type. And in the argument to type, we give the name of the variable that you want to check, which in this case happens to be DNA, right? So, and then of course we ensure that all 
brackets are closed. So this bracket is basically corresponding to this one here, and this bracket is basically corresponding to the initial back bracket that we'd opened at the print statement, right? So we close everything, and then we execute this to determine the data type of the variable DNA, right? So when you run that, you say the data type of DNA is class str. So this is basically a string data type. Then we come to num1. Remember, num1 is equal to 123. So we are checking now the data type of num1. So we, again, run this part. We say print. And then in round brackets, double quotes, the data type of num1 is. Here are double quote ends. So after this, we give our actual value whose data type we want to know. So we put a comma. And then we say type. And in round brackets, the argument to type is num1. Or we want to check the type of data presented num1. So we run this here. And when you run this, this is the answer. The data type of uh, num1 is class int. So this is basically an integer. Now let's see what is the data type of a data whose value contains a decimal number. So let's say what is the data type for num2. So you run this. And you get the data type for num2 is float. So any, any number that contains a decimal position, decimal place, would be a float. Then we look at the data type of num3. Num3 equals to minus 15. So what does minus 15 represent? Minus 15 would also be an integer. So when you run this, this was an integer again. Num4 equals to 2 plus 4j. So this is basically a complex number. So you can then again run this and check out the data type for num4. So when you run this, you get complex, right? So this is a complex number. Then let's say we reassign a value to num4. So we say num4 equals to 2, but this time we are giving it in double integer quotes, right? Anything within double integer quotes is a string. So when you check for the data type in num4, you should get a string value. So you run this here, and then you're again uh, printing the data type that is found in num4. And if you see here, this is the string value now. Now, let's say you want the user to input two numbers, and then you want to check what is the sum of those numbers, right? So let's do that. So play this number one equals to input, and then you display the message so that the user is prompted to input the number. So you say, in double quotes, input the first number. So when you run this, the program is going to ask the user to input the first number. Let's say I give 10, right? I press enter. Now I come to the next statement. I say number two equals to input, input the second number. So I give my second number here. So I play this and it is prompting me to give in the second number. Let's say this is 20, right? And then I press enter. Now let's say you want to see the sum of number one and number two. So this is number one, number one is 10, number two is 20. You want to sum number one and number two. So you play this, sum one equals to number one plus number two. And then you say print someone, right? So when you say print someone, you should get a value of ideally 30. But what you get is 1020. So now you clearly know that there is some problem here. So the idea is whenever you take an input from the terminal, the input is stored as a string always, right? So when you do a string one plus a string two, the two strings get concatenated. So 10 concatenates to 20 to give you 10, 20, right? So this is something that you need to keep in mind. The default data type that you take when you ask you to input is a string. So as I say, this happens because any input taken from the terminal is by default treated as a string. And when a plus is used between the two strings, it, get, it concatenates the strings together. So just to show you that the numbers that you've taken as input are being treated as string, we determine the uh, data type for number one. So you say print type number one, and you play this. And you can see this comes as a string. Right? So the question then is, is there a way to uh, still sum them together? Yes, there is a way. What you can do is you can define the nature of your uh, of your data type while you're doing your summation. So let's say you say sum equals to int. int is for integer. And then as an argument to int, you give your number one. 
plus i n t integer again and as an argument to integer you give your number two so when you do this summation you will get a value of 30. so you say print sum and you have basically a value of 30. and then also there is this question of whether there is a direct way of taking an input as an integer so that can also be done for example here num6 equals to i n t and then you open your round bracket input and then uh, the input statement that you want and then you say input a number and then you close your double quotes and your round brackets and now when you run this the program will prompt you to input a number and this number would by default go as string but because i've already defined that num6 equals to integer of what is input so this will get converted to integer right so let's uh, press enter here and now you're checking the type of num6. So you say play and you have the num6 is now integer. Right? So there is another command which you can use to basically check whether your data type is what you expect it is. For example, you can write is instance num6 and you expect it to be an integer because you've taken while taking input, you have defined that it has to be an integer. So you say num6 comma int. So you're checking whether the statement you're making num6 is an integer or not so when you say is instance round brackets num6 comma int and you say run this will give you a boolean answer so this here says true right so which means that your num6 is actually an integer let's check it the other way around so we add a code again and we can say is in stance num6 comma str right and let's see if this is true or false so we know that it's going to be false because num6 is an integer so you play this and you get the value of false so why it is important to know what data type your variable is because certain functions certain methods and certain privileges are only given to a specific type of data type for example numerical operations can only be performed on a numeric data type Likewise, certain operations like slice can only be performed on a string data type and not on a numeric data type. So now let's talk a bit about slice, right? So if you remember, uh, we had uh, declared a string at the top. So we say DNA is equal to ATT GCC, right? So let me just print it here so that you remember. So code and I say print DNA. Right. And you say run. So this is the value of DNA, ATT, GCC, right? So let's now look at some of the string functions. So one of the important string functions is slice, which can help you pull out a certain part of the string or subset of the string, right? So here you are. So this is the slice function where you can basically pull out individual characters of the string. So for example, here I say print DNA and then in, in rectangular brackets, I say zero. So which will print out the first element of your DNA that is A. So let's run this to see what is the output you get. So here you are, you are slicing out your string and pulling out the first element of the string. In Python, the indexing is from zero. So which means that the first element of the string is found at the zeroth position. This is in contrast to R where the indexing begins at one. So let's say you want to pull out a substring. So you can say print, P-R-I-N-T, print, DNA, zero is to four. So basically when you say zero is to four, it is starting at position zero and giving you sequence until one minus the final position that you mentioned after the colon here, right? So this is basically your ATTG. If you see the original one was ATTGCC. So we stop here today. We have discussed the numeric uh, data type and also the string data type in uh, Python today. And we'll continue our discussion into the next lecture. And we'll talk more about the slice function and also we'll talk about data structures, list, tuples, dictionaries, right? Thank you very much.